This is part 88 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to build a jQuery select menu using data from database tables. Here is what we want to achieve. We're going to have these two database tables. The first table is going to contain countries data. At the moment, within this countries table, we've got three countries. The second table contain cities data. So the first three cities, they belong to country ID 1. Country ID 1 is USA. Cities 4 and 5, they belong to country ID 2, which is India. And the last three cities, they belong to country ID 3, which is United Kingdom. Using the data from these two tables, we want to build a drop-down list, as you can see here. Notice we've got country USA. Underneath that, we have all the cities belonging to country USA. And then we have country India, cities belonging to that. Similarly, you have UK and the countries belonging to that. Now here, we are not using any sort of jQuery. And with jQuery, you know, jQuery UI styles will be applied to the drop-down list. And this is how it looks like. So let's see how to build this drop-down list using data from these two database tables. So in order to build a drop-down list like this, we have to build an HTML structure that looks like this. So we have a select element. And within the select element, we have got three option group elements. And within each option group, we have the cities belonging to that specific country. So first we have USA and all the cities belonging to USA. Value is the country ID and the label is nothing but the name of the country. Everything coming from the database. So let's see how to build this HTML structure using the data that we have got in countries and cities tables. So the first step here is to create these tables, which I have already done. So here's the SQL script. So this script is going to create the tables and populate them with the data that we have seen on the slides. I'll have all the SQL available on my blog in case you need it. The next step is to create a stored procedure, which is going to retrieve data from countries and cities table. I've already executed the script. So when we execute this stored procedure, we should get data from countries table and cities table. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have an ASP.NET Web application project. Within the web.config file, I have included a connection string to our sample DB database, which contains our database tables. Now let's flip to web form 1. So within the code behind file, we need to write ADO.NET code to retrieve data from the database tables. So the first thing that we need to do is read the connection string from web.config file. I've already included the ADO.NET namespaces that we would require system.data, system.data.sql client, and system.configuration. So let's go ahead and create a variable of type string. And we are going to use configuration manager class to read the connection string from the web.config file. The name of the connection string within web.config file is dbcs. So let's go ahead and read that connection string. The next step is to create a SQL connection object. So using the connection string that we have read from the web.config file, we are going to create the SQL connection object. Now let's go ahead and create a SQL data adapter object. And using this SQL data adapter object, we are going to execute this stored procedure. So let's copy the name of the stored procedure. And I'm going to use this overloaded version of the stored procedure where we tell the command that we want to execute and the connection that we want to use in order to execute that command. So the command that we want to execute is this stored procedure. And the connection that we are going to use is this connection object. And since this is a stored procedure, we have to tell that to the data adapter object. So I'm going to say da.selectCommand.commandType dot type equals command type dot stored procedure. Now let's go ahead and create a data set. Let's call it ds. And I'm going to call the fill method of the data adapter object to retrieve the data and fill that in the data set. So now this data set is going to contain those two tables which are TBL countries and TBL cities. Now, let's go ahead and create two classes to represent these two tables. So first, I'm going to add a city class. So let's go ahead and add a class file. Let's call this city.cs. And this class is going to contain three properties. The first property is going to be of type integer. Let's call it ID. 
and the second property is going to be of type string and this is going to store the name of the city so name is the property and the third property is going to be of type integer and this is going to represent country ID now let's go ahead and add another class file and let's call this country.cs so again country class is going to contain ID name of the country and a country contains list of cities so here I'm going to create a property of type list of city and let's call this cities and let's have the default get and set accessors okay so country is also going to contain a collection of cities that belong to a given country okay so we have got city and country classes now back in our code behind file so let's save all these changes so within our code behind file I am going to create a list here a list of country and let's call this list countries equals new list of country now actually what I'm going to do is move all this code into a private function and we can call that function wherever we need so I'm going to cut all this code and then create a function here a private function and this function is going to return list of country objects and let's call this get select menu data and I'm going to paste the code which we have written so far okay so finally this function should return list of country objects alright so we have a variable here which is going to store list of countries so now I am going to use this this data set now contains rows of both the tables in our TBL country and TBL cities so let's use a for each loop here so for each data row let's call this country row in we know that the tables collection in the data set the first table is going to be countries table so ds dot tables of zero dot rows so we want to loop through each data row that is present within the TBL countries table within the data set so what do we want to do we want to retrieve the country ID name um, and then list of cities and then populate that within this list countries object so first I'm going to create a country object let's call it country equals new country and country dot ID so how do we get the ID we can use this country row as we are looping through each row country row of ID and the ID is an integer property so let's go ahead and convert that to an integer so convert dot 2 and 32 similarly we need the country name so country dot name equals country row that we are looping over and name is the column and dot to string okay now we need the list of cities that belong to a given country to get the list of cities we'll have to retrieve those rows from cities table and cities table is again present within this data set so I'm going to say data set dot tables of one so the second table within the data set contains cities data dot I'm going to use the select function here and using this function we can actually specify a filter so we want to filter out all the rows and retrieve only the cities that belong to the current country that we are currently iterating over and to get the ID of the country we can use country dot ID property which we have already populated right here so I'm going to say country ID equals whatever value we have you know in the ID property of the country object and let's convert that to a string so what is the select method going to do look at the IntelliSense it's going to return us an array of data row objects so I'm going to create a variable here data row and these are 
CT rows, right? Or let's simply call it cities. So we have within this um, object, we have the cities that belong to the country that we are currently iterating over. Okay, so now I'm going to use another for each loop here. For each city, for each data row, let's call the city row in cities. So this contains the cities that belong to the country that we are iterating over. Now we are looping through each city object. And what do we want to do? We want to create a city object. So let's call it city equals new city. And we want to do a similar thing. We want to retrieve city ID, city name. So I'm going to simply make a copy of that. And instead of country here, I'm going to say city dot ID equals we have to use the city row city row of ID we want to convert that to integer similarly city dot name equals city row of name dot to string and city also has got country ID so let's go ahead and populate that city dot country ID equals convert dot to two and 32 city row of country ID so we have built the city object here. Now another thing that we need to do outside of this for each loop is create a list of cities object which is going to store all the cities that belong to a specific country. So I'm going to create a list of city object here. Let's call this list cities equals new list of city. And as we are looping through each city, we want to build a city object and add that city object to list cities. So list cities dot add the city object that we have just constructed. Okay? By the time this loop finishes, you know, we have gathered all the cities that belong to the country that we are iterating over in this object. So all that is left now is to populate cities property of the country object. So country dot cities equals whatever we have within this list cities object. Okay, so that's it. So the first loop is going to loop through each country row. The second loop is going to loop through each city, you know, that belong to a given country. And then we have the country object with all the information that we need. And if you look at what this function is returning, it's returning list of country object. And we have already constructed an object with list of type list of country. All that is left is to return that object. Okay, so finally, let's go ahead and return list countries. So we have our pri private function get select menu data, which is getting us the data that we need from the database table. Now let's go ahead and build the HTML structure that we would require. So this is the HTML structure that we want to build using the data that we have retrieved from the database. To build this HTML structure, I'm going to use two repeater controls. So let's drag and drop the first repeater control. So from the toolbox, I'm going to drag and drop this repeater control. Let's call this repeater countries. So we're going to bind this to countries. Okay. So within this repeater, I'm going to have an item template. All right. Now, what is the HTML structure that we want? This is the HTML structure. So the first thing that we need is a select element. So in order to get that select element, I'm going to hard code that. So the first thing is select element. Outside of this repeater, I'm going to have a select element. Give it an ID. Let's call it select menu. And this repeater is actually going to be present inside this select element. So we have the select element. Inside that, we have the repeater. Repeater has got the item template. And within the item template, so what do we want within the repeater? We want option groups within the repeater. OK? So I'm going to include an option group element inside the item template. So opt group, and I'm going to set the label property. Label equals. So what do we want as the label for the option group? we want the name of the country. 
okay so how are we going to get the name of the country now we are going to bind the data that this function returns so what is this function returning it's returning list of country objects so we are going to bind the data to this repeater so repeater countries dot data source equals get select menu data and then I'm going to call data bind function okay so we have bound you know list of country objects to the repeater so now that list of country object you know if you look at the country object it has got the name property which contains the name of the uh, country so that's what we want to bind to this label attribute of the opt group element so I'm going to use the data binding syntax here so angle brackets percentage hash and we are going to use the eval function and we want to bind to name property of the country object okay so this item template will be executed for each row that we have for each object that we have okay so that's going to take care of building these opt group elements but within each opt group element we want the options which will contain the date of the uh, cities that belong to a given country so in order to build these options of each option group I'm going to use another repeater so we are going to have a nested repeater so I'm going to place a repeater inside this opt group element so let's drag and drop another repeater control so inside that opt group element we have another repeater here and I'm going to call this repeater cities okay so we are going to bind this repeater to the cities that are present within the cities property of the country object so I'm going to also set the data source attribute of this repeater so data source equals I'm going to bind the data source property of the repeater to cities property within the country object so let's copy this let's use the eval function and instead of binding to name property I'm actually going to bind to cities property so here we have specified we're going to bind this repeater to cities collection alright now so this is the repeater which we are going to use to produce these options so let's go ahead and specify the option elements so option so again inside this repeater we have to use the item template and inside that I'm going to use an option element and the value for that so the value for that is going to come from again we are using the data binding syntax so here this repeater is being bound to cities right city object also has got name property and ID property okay so as the value of the option we want the ID of the city so here I'm going to bind to ID property of the city object okay and the label for each option we want the name of the city so I'm going to again copy this and inside that option the label we want the name of the city okay All right so that's the HTML that we would require so with this let's go ahead and save all our changes let's run this so now at the moment we are not using any jQuery code so we have only written the ADO.NET code ASP.NET and look at this we don't get anything within the drop-down list let's see why is that so we have the repeater countries here and we have bound repeater countries to you know we have set the data source to whatever this function returns but at the moment for some reason this web form is not displaying any data let's investigate why let's first of all see if the stored procedure is returning the data yes the stored procedure is returning data let's quickly see if we are actually getting data you know when we call this stored procedure from our dotnet application so I'm actually going to throw in a breakpoint here run the application in debug mode so when the stored procedure is executed we should be able to bring the data into our dotnet application 
So we have hit the breakpoint. So we have the data set object here. So I'm going to you know, view the data in data set visualizer. Look at, look at that. We are getting the data into the .NET application as well. Now let's throw in another breakpoint here and see if the data is actually being returned. So at the moment we have breakpoint here and the execution has stopped right here. So I'm going to plus F5. And if we look at list countries, look at that. For some reason, list countries count is zero. Let's see why is that. So where are we creating list countries object? So here we have list countries. And look at that. We have created the country object. We populated the country ID, country name. And then we are creating the list of cities that belong to each country. But what we have forgot to do is add the country object to this list that we have created. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's detach the debugger. And all that we have to do is to list countries, we have to add the country object that we have constructed. So let's go ahead and add that to list countries. Now let's go ahead and run this once more. And now we should get the data that we expect. So notice that we have you know, the city names, uh, I mean the country names, and at each country name we have the cities that belonging to that respective country. And at the moment, we didn't use any jQuery code at all. Okay. So now let's go ahead and use jQuery select menu. So the ID of the select element here is select menu. So let's use the jQuery ID selector. Find the select menu. And on that, I'm going to call select menu function. So let's save the changes. Let's run this. And look at that. Now, the width of the drop-down list, you know, we want to set the width. And to do that, I'm going to use the width option. So width, let's set it to maybe to 200 pixels. And let's also say we want to retrieve the selected item value and label. So I'm going to hook up the select event handler. So when the select event is raised, this is a function that gets called. And this function is going to receive two parameters, the event object itself and the jQuery UI element that triggered the event. So I'm going to use the JavaScript alert and display the selected item value and label. So alert label equals UI dot item dot label and to that let's append space and then we want the value. So value equals UI dot item dot value. Okay. Right, so let's save these changes, run this one more time. And look at this. When we select, for example, Chicago, so label equals Chicago, value equals 3. Now let's go ahead and select Chennai, label equals Chennai, value equals 5. We are getting the value, but for some reason, look at that. You know, we've got um, a lot of space. Uh, you know, the alert is not quite what we expect. Let's see why is that. So here, we're getting the cities option. Maybe it has got some space, you know, as the label. So that's why I have removed all those. Let's save this. And let's run this one more time. And now let's select, for example, Bangalore. Now look at this. We don't have those extra spaces. Label equals Bangalore. Value equals 4. All right. So here we have the stored procedure, the city class, and the country class. And here we have the HTML and the jQuery code. And finally, the code in the code behind file. Thank you for listening and have a great day.